So, quite a lot of big stories to talk about this morning. We've got Boris Johnson in the Telegraph saying that we should have a referendum on the ECHR. What, I don't what? want to have another referendum on anything. Thanks. I don't think I don't think that we are equipped to have a deal or, or a referendum no. on the EHCR. To be honest with you, no. I really don't. No. We don't need one. And the cost of it to roll out another what is what's also, Boris Johnson? The age-old question whenever anybody says what's the ref what, what should we have a referendum? What's the question? Exactly. Should we dis did we do away with the ECHR? Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's the I don't what? know what the question is. I just don't. Are you going to read his book? No. 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 Are you in his book? I don't know. I shouldn't think so. I doubt it. We're trying to get him on for interview about his book. But Why I'm don't really... you ask Laura Kunzberg then, who's in the book? Because she's clearly read it. Well, she, I presume, has also not only read the book, but uh, has made some copious notes about it and sent them all to Boris Johnson. I, I still find that story very weird. So do Why I. Why on earth, does, does, just because you've sent some preparate, preparatory work to a guy, why can't you interview him on some other things? It's not like Emily Maitlis sending Prince Andrew the list of questions no. beforehand, is it? No. It really isn't. And, I mean, Boris Johnson has got such a sort of broad spectrum of things you could ask him about. Yes. Why would you have to cancel the interview? Yes. It doesn't make any sense to it, me. It makes no sense to mm. me at all. Yeah. I just wonder if it's another, you know, show of impartiality on behalf of the BBC, perhaps. Maybe it's a PR thing. I just yeah. don't know. It doesn't... It and doesn't do you think Boris would have read those notes anyway? Well, this is the thing. It's what everybody says. He doesn't read anything. No. He, he probably hasn't even read his own book. He book. No, exactly <laughs> right. Uh, the other big story on the front page this morning um, is uh, MPs to be given a historic vote on the legalisation of assisted dying. I know it's a bit early in the morning for this kind of serious talk, but this is quite a big issue, isn't it? It is a very big issue. It affects a lot of people. Uh, it, well, it affects every single one of us, Mike. Yeah. That's the reality of it. Uh, because one fact is true, we are going to die at some point. Yeah. So this, for me, is... Uh, a way of extrapolating the nuances of this bill and yeah. I for one do not support it I will be writing to my MP asking him not to mm. support it too yeah. um, of course that's not going to have a lot of way but I, I think it's do. very I think it's very important that we tease out the nuance in this regardless of your religious beliefs yeah. this is not a question about religious dogma no this is about society if you want your in growing empirically and actually growing in value yes and i think to take that away take the fundamental right of life away i think it's a very mm. slippery i mean slope. i have mixed feelings on this story because there, Most was, a, there was a will, time Mike. there was a time when i thought i don't think it's a bad idea to bring this uh, legalization of assisted dying in but the more i thought about it the more i think about it the more I think, the way it works at the moment is kind of quite a British way of, of, of doing things. You know, it's against the law, but most people don't get prosecuted. In yeah. fact, you know, if they do start a prosecution, they usually drop it. Mm -hmm. And I know that that can be difficult for people, but basically, if you want to help your, you know, elderly relative to, to pass on, you can do it, but and everyone, you probably won't be prosecuted. Everyone frames it, though, as the elderly. This is not going to just affect the yeah, elderly. Right. If we look to countries who already have it in situ, like Canada, yeah. like the Netherlands, right. we're finding younger people with mental health issues mm. presenting for the need for assisted yeah. dying, which I think is hugely, hugely damaging. Yes, if it's we a good had, point, actually. We, people don't normally think about it. No, that. they don't. And if we had a proper palliative care system in this country that walked hand in hand with the NHS, keeping the charitable status is within hospices yes i think we would actually have a much better society going forward in terms of caring in terms of service yeah. and in terms of you know keeping people alive comfortably and i think as you say if you offer the opportunity for people to take a decision which will end their life or allow one of their, their, their representatives to do so yeah. there's going to be mistakes of course and there's going there to be, be and there's going to be people perhaps with not the best intentions getting involved in exactly it. and yeah. the law must be there to protect the vulnerable and this law won't i think yeah. it would actually make it worse for those in vulnerable positions. Yeah. I think you're on balance. I think you're absolutely right. Let's move back to uh, the story that doesn't seem to go away. We can't get rid of it What's every that single one? day. <laughs> and this is the access, cash for access. Uh -huh. You know, the story that's driving everybody mad. I watched Question Time last night, yes. which I don't normally do. Uh, sometimes I, I give it a miss. But, you know, it was incredible because people have said to me, oh, it's only the right wing that are having a go at the government over this. And actually, it's not. It's not. Everybody is really, really annoyed. Yeah. And the whole first half of Question Time last night, with all sorts of various... It was up in Dundee, funnily enough, yeah. so they had a few Scottish representatives there. But all that anybody wanted to talk about was, how dare you? 
How dare you think that you can just sit there and take these freebies? As we continue to have, you know, increasing prices, we're paying more for our, our petrol, we're paying more for our energy, more for we're paying everything. more for our food, we're paying more for everything, and you guys are just getting it all for free. It, it's the sheer hypocrisy yeah, of it. Exactly. It's the rank hypocrisy. People aren't stupid, mm. right? And I think this is going to blow up. And I don't think there's ever been a Labour government with such a majority that's doing so badly yeah. in the history of time. Mm. They don't have a clear optic. They don't have a clear route for change. And they still we kept, don't get it. We still, we kept hearing this word change. Yeah. The only change, they're not even getting any change no. because they're not paying for anything. We're not getting Because everything's free. No, the only thing they're changing is their outfits. Yes, I mean, exactly. But the sun this morning, you've got yet another tale to tell. Is that um, the croissant which is, one? Which is all about croissants. Uh, they're calling it um, croissant row. Um, cash for access. Uh, basically, bosses have been invited to gain insight from Jonathan Reynolds uh, over croissants at the Manchester restaurant, The Ivy. Yeah. Um, he's the business secretary, of course. Now, if you want to go and have breakfast with him at The Ivy, uh, we are thrilled to extend to you a unique opportunity to become a commercial partner at our business policy. I mean, it's not a business they're doing, it's a government, right? Do you know what, So, Mike? you know what, for £15,000 <laughs> plus VAT, plus mind you, <laughs> you get a keynote speaking opportunity, you get branding on display and in all promotional materials, a photo opportunity with key speakers uh, and dedicated member of staff to make introductions for but the, you. Uh, how much is the one for the picture? I think that's 30k. 30,000 yeah. gets you an opportunity to build a business audience really? in your sector, photo opportunities Friends. with key speakers and another dedicated member of staff to make introductions. That doesn't sound like worth twice as much, to Do you be know honest. What I don't know why anyone would want to go for breakfast instead of watching breakfast with you. Well, exactly Come right. on. You can come and watch this for Ex free. For free. Cost you nothing. Nothing at Have all. Have your own croissant. Right. And if you want to turn up outside the building later, <laughs> I'll do a picture as well. And I'll give you a croissant. In fact, if you want a croissant, I'll buy you one. Right? Uh, I mean, I'm. How can a, you turn that off for a down, guys? I'm an equal opportunity, um, you know, there personality. You go. Jonathan Reynolds was on this show, um, and I asked him a series of questions about Lord Wahid Ali. Yeah. To wit, you know, have you seen him in Downing Street? No. Does he still have a Downing Street pass? I don't know. I don't know. Did he ever have one? I'm not sure. Um, are you planning to see him later on today? No. Um, do you know what he does? No. Does he have a job there? No, I don't know. I mean, you know, this character that was having a row with me earlier, um, who I think was a, is either a former Labour MP or, or somebody who had to stand down because of some scandal or other, um, bottom line is, he didn't... Um, he, he just parroted the same stuff. Oh, Lord, my God, he's such a nice man. I said, well, what was he doing in Libya? What was he doing in um, Syria? What was he doing in Iraq? Ayatollah. Don't know. Do you know what? It's actually it's easier, I would think, to get a pass for Downing Street than it is to get a pass for here. It probably is. Yeah. Well, you just got to give him a couple of million. You know, mm -hmm. easily done. Speaking of which, you've got Dale Vince coming on later. Have you? Yeah, Mrs. Dale Vince. He, not she's happy not very him. happy, is she? No, she's going. Well, <laughs> mind you, I think she's in the wrong here because he's he's divorced her, right? Yeah. Or then this process of getting divorced. Yeah. Why does she think she gets to have any kind of title? from somebody who is her ex. He's quite entitled anyway without his title, well, he is, isn't he? Well, he is quite entitled, but, I mean, he claims it's all a, a red herring and that, that he's not, in, in fact, after a, a title at all. But, of course, they would say that, wouldn't they? Well, of course he but would. But the point is, if he gets a, a, a peerage, right, and he becomes Lord Well, Dale he couldn't Vince. wear the fur because is he not quite... Is he vegan or something? I think he is or vegan, he, yeah. Well, he won't be able to wear the fur. No, he won't be able to wear no, fake so let's, fur. Let, yeah. I mean, yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that she has no right to become well, lady don't or anything, say does she? That. Don't well, no, say she's that. not his wife anymore. Well, this, if they're going through the process of divorce, then in fact, no. technically, she's still might be. You can't have it both be. ways. If you well, want to be lady, why Vince, then? Why then do the uh, ex-partners go after pensions, etc.? Because when they that's want, not even because, because they, they want, the, want money. the money exactly. Yeah. So what does she want? I can tell you a lot about this, but you know. Oh, I don't. That's not. I can tell you a lot about this, but stop. If it's too early look, in the morning. Look after people. I don't have a defibrillator to get don't your you? heart going again. No. Don't worry, we've got one round the corner. Uh, that, that bloke from Labour's on it at the moment. <laughs> <laughs>